Hey, it's cool here if you don't know, and it is time for another safe mode stream. Now this is hot off the heels of The Longest Journey, which we just finished uh, two weeks ago now. And some of the puzzles in The Longest Journey are really bizarre with uh, strange solutions and all that. And I uh, kind of suggested in the middle of it somewhere I should show you guys Lost in Time. Uh, this is a game that was designed by Muriel Trami uh, as part of uh, Cocktail Vision's uh, works. Mm, uh, several of their games are like kind of softcore porn adventures. This is definitely not that or else I would get banned. But uh, this is one of their safe things. They also did like goblins, which uh, I didn't realize before, and also uh, the bizarre adventures of Woodruff and the Schnibble of Azimuth, uh, both of which are um, like cartoony style and just weird and bizarre. Uh, this one is not quite FMV. But it's also kind of, there's some like minor FMV bits to it, but also like 3D, like pre-rendered. It's weird. And it also has some really weird solutions to problems, possibly even weirder than The Longest Journey. My plan is to actually finish this in one stream. It's not too, too long. Uh, it might be a bit of a longer stream as a result, but... Um, yeah, we're, we're going to be able to finish this in one go. Let's get started. Also a little weird to, to control the, uh, the audio settings for this. So if it's a little loud or quiet, let me know and I'll do my best. Oh, my head. Where am I? I must be drunk. Or am I dreaming? The ship, the box, the man. Okay, so we start with three items already. Paint remover, pliers, and a small pipe. I wonder how we got all those. Let's take a look at the stool. That's mahogany, alright? For some reason there's a nail underneath the stool that we can just grab with, uh, with these pliers that we have. I must be dreaming. This ship is moving. But it was shipwrecked. What am I doing here? It's real dark back there. Oh, man. Oh, my head. The manor. The lighthouse. The chimney. What happened? Where am I? There's a lamp over here. Should allow us to see behind these barrels, I imagine. I need to actually use the lamp in the dark place. We get a sponge. Is that mouse icon the SNES mouse? I don't know, could, could very well be. An interesting way to zoom into objects. Yeah, they, uh, they definitely had a budget for this. I think this is one of their first games that was uh, published by Sierra Online. If I'm not mistaken, I could be mistaken, but like it it definitely was published by Sierra. Anyway, we have water, we have a sponge. Obviously we want to use that sponge. Nothing weird about that. This text is weird. Don't be mistaken, I'm not ready to start over with a clean slate. What? Why why do you feel that you need to mention that? Anyway, uh there's no thing here. It's also dark. The room is dark. You need to light a lamp. Another damn down there. Oak cask. A bottle of palm oil. It's from the island of St. Cristobal. Where could that be? The date on it is 1840. It's nearly full. It's like we're lost in time or something. Where there are chains, there could be no pleasure. Depends on who you ask. 
Anyway, there is dirty water. There is a bilge pond. It's stuck. Well, we have some oil. There we go. So far, yeah. Solutions make sense. You need a, a lamp to uh, see in dark places. You need oil to oil up the pump so that we can... Actually, I don't know why we did that. The game is just a tad louder. Alright. Let's uh, put that down to like 14 maybe? Oh. Might also help if I move the mic up. I forgot to do that. Okay, so now we can see the bottom of this chain, and there's a corkscrew right here. No wonder with all these barrels. I mean, yeah. I think that's about all we can do here. Um, before we do too much else, I will mention that, that this game does have, and they are coming up pretty close, um themes of slavery and also one instance of suicidal ideation so uh, you might want to skip ahead a little bit if um if you need to we're going to use this sponge to get rid of this well let's look at the poster first 1840 it's an old poster but it looks really new 1840 this is 1992. let's get rid of it There's a knot in the wood. Let's see if we can take that out with a corkscrew. I wonder what's on the other side. Hello, my friend. I made a hole so I could talk with you. Can you hear me? Can you understand me? Woman, one would have to be deaf not to hear noise you are making. You can move around. I am shackled to the ship. I'm free to move around, but I don't know how I got here. What about you? In the great country, I am Yoruba, the last son of a noble family of Egyptian wizards. My duty is to guard the treasure of my ancestors. But because I was taken away from my land and enslaved with others, I am no longer a free man. And since this disruption in time, my memory has been wandering. A slave? A treasure? It must be the box with the Egyptian sarcophagus. But where am I? We are on a ship, aren't we? Yes, this ship belongs to Jarlath de la Brunelière, a very rich man. He has plantation and slaves on St. Cristobal Island. I lived on the island until Master decided to ship me along with treasure of my tribe. Charlotte, I am here because of him. The slave trade has long been forbidden, hasn't it? Where is this ship going? It is going to that cold land where all the men like Jarlath come from. But I will kill myself before we arrive there. Because I have a knife. You have a knife? Give it to me. I have a better use for it. Why should I give it to you? I have no reason to live anymore on the island. Left all that made my life worth living, the love of my life. The woman I love, my velvet, she is master's wife, but I love her more than my life. We have a child. Incredible. You stole Charlotte's wife? Well, because of the child, you shouldn't lose courage. Give me the knife. I will come back and free you. You must be joking, woman. I am tied to the ship 
And this room is sealed tight as a tomb. Don't worry. I'll find a way. I will free you, I promise. And why should I trust you, woman? Even if, for some unknown reason, I believed you. Thank you for believing me, Yoruba. When I get out of here, I will come back and free you. I promise. No explanation as to how... Uh, I'll just say the character's name is Doralise. But no explanation as to how Doralise ended up um, getting Yoruba's knife. None whatsoever. <laughs> I'm sorry, but th this game definitely goes to weird places. And yeah, it's not exactly the best written game. It's just one that I kind of remember from when I was a kid. I think I, I, think I might have a disc of this game somewhere. I just don't remember where it is. I just had a, uh, a backup saved. Anyway, we use the knife to carve a step in this post. And apparently that's enough for us to climb up. Climb was easy. There's a door right here, scratching me. Wrong form of here, scratching behind it. Okay, so this is stuck, so obviously we're gonna need to find some it's perfectly alright. Okay. Impossible to remove. Or one of these pins is probably one that we need to, to take out, right? Ah, I see. We need to use the pliers. Find one of them somewhere. Apparently not any of those. But we are going to need one of these pins. There we go. If you, bang, if you bang on it, you will get it out. We have a pin. Let's see. And now the... There's not a whole lot that we can do over here. There's a cannon. Maybe that'll come into play at some point. This one has a big chip. It must be incredible. I wonder if this chip that you're talking about uh, is tasty with some dip. But I wonder if it's important to note. Okay, so now... Oops. Oh, go back. The cocaine sugar question? This ran me a towel in this one. Okay. I guess it could have. I'm not going to discount the fact that it could. Alright. So well, now that we have this towel, I'm gonna go over here. The broken ore. I'm sure that's going to be important. I am, just just to be clear, I am following a uh, more or less following uh, a walkthrough for this because I just want to show you this game. I'm not looking to solve it. I've already done so a couple of times. The ring here. Well, maybe we can uh, get some purchase on it this time. Looks like that worked. If it's slippery, then use a towel. Don't forget to bring a towel. It's a strange place to hide soap. Such a rare kind. Hmm, but the bottom moves though, that's interesting. Let's see. Alright, so now... So you remember that uh, stuck door up there? Oh, we got some soap. And maybe we can use this wet sponge on 
on the soap. And there we go. Nope, it doesn't do anything. So then what should we do? Well, remember this cannon that has a big chip in it? We apparently scrape the soap against this uh, rusty cannon to make soap shavings. How you're supposed to know to do that is beyond me. I always do that with my soap. But yes, considering that we weren't able to just use the soap as is, we would need to use the soap shavings. So obviously we need to, to use the sponge on the soap shavings to get them wet, right? No. Just use the shavings directly on the door and that'll make it work again. Oh, a woman. But where are you going dressed like that? Where did you come from? How did you get aboard this ship? It's a very strange story. Oh, I don't know what's happening. I must have lost my memory. Where are we and where are we going? It looks like you're in the wrong time. You'll be surprised. The year is 1840. From your clothes, I'd say you're from the 20th century. In the wrong time? 1840? It's impossible. Back in time? You must be kidding me. That's pure science fiction. It's true. I'm an agent with a space-time patrol. I come from the year 2092, and I'm after people who travel illegally. It's not my fault, believe me. Let me tell you what happened. Maybe you can explain what's going on. Good. But first, help me get free. I can hardly move anymore. I'm not a good cook, but uh, it was the only way I could get on board. They seem to have a habit of tying people up on this ship. The captain didn't like my cooking. And there was nothing left to cook with the beans, so I used sawdust instead of breadcrumbs. Oh, I can't do it. These knots are too tight. Wait. I'm going to get something. Just a minute. Before you disappear, tell me how you got here. That may help me with my mission. Well, it all started with a letter from a lawyer who told me to meet him in front of the Manor de la Prunelière. Apparently, I inherited it from a relative who died in 1840. Nice place, but a little isolated. Good, the lawyer isn't here yet. Let's have a look around. Also, guest commentary from the fridge again. Okay, so obvious block here. Apparently that's a battery. Let's grab this car battery. Sure. I'm sure that'll be useful. Thing weighs a ton. Also two of these. Uh, no cigarettes. No, I don't smoke anyway. Also, something else that you need to keep in mind. Sometimes you have to check something multiple times to get everything out of it. There's also a small pipe there. And there's this basket. Which has some apples. Someone won't have an apple pie this evening. So also, you, you might notice that uh, these are all items that we've gotten so far. The items that we had are gone. So we basically started in Midias Res. We started kind of in at the start of Chapter 2, and now this is Chapter 1 proper. So this pack has a matchbox. And some foil. Be nice if I could just put those in my main inventory because I don't think the pack itself is particularly useful. Anyway. So there's a horse here. I wonder if he's part of the inheritance. Be wild or tame, my friend. So this horse is just being stubborn. 
Let's uh, let's beat it. There you go. Nom nom nom. That's a good horse. A note attached with a dart. Why is there just a dart board on this uh, gate? I have so many questions all on. Miss Doralise, I was here to meet you, but something is wrong. Someone has locked the gate. It looks like a smuggler is using this house you inherited to hide his loot. Wait here, I'm going to get the police. Good, my first problem as a homeowner. We'll get to the bottom of this right away. So rather than do the smart thing, she's going to break into her own inherited house that she hasn't signed the papers for and deal with smugglers that she has no idea about. Also, hey Ricky, how you doing? You must kneel a bullseye to enter the gate. So yes, there's a lock. We could try to pick it with the dart, but that's not going to do anything. So what do you think we got to do? We got to use this pipe on the battery to get some battery acid out of it that we use to melt the lock. It was too easy. If I come across the intruder, I'll say that I love beautiful stones. Uh, what? I love beautiful stones? Okay. Uh, hi, Tyrion. How are you doing? Okay, so let's uh, let's check out the manor. Oh dear. Hope the rest of this house is more sturdy. But yeah, just the handle casually falling off. Um, let's see. What was the next step here? Right, so we need to check out this portrait. Alright. Might that sailor be my ancestor? Now the portrait also has a wire attached to it. Um, I don't think there's anything else that we can do right now. Uh, we can grab one of these logs. Just carry a log with you, sure. The key is in the keyhole. Well, we can at least poke it out. This, sure, this makes sense. If the if the key is on the other side of the keyhole, and this is a, a manor from 1840, you can probably just poke the key out. But how do you get the key? We're not quite there yet. Anyway, let's go to the yard here. There's a well. It's a lovely well. It's a bit deep. Can't see the bottom. But uh, for now, let's go to the backyard. There's a couple of things here. There's a strange building and there's a lighthouse. Right now, we're going to check out the lighthouse. Hopefully we'll, we have a little more luck here. Those, of course, no luck to be seen. Even if I pull on the handle like crazy, it won't open. It looks like it looks less like this door is locked than it's actually just stuck. Let's get this bottle. The bottle of vinegar. It's open for wine, but I guess not. It'd be nice to have that corkscrew from uh, from before, but uh, that's still in the past. Much too heavy to move. Maybe we can use this dart in the pole. Huh? Oh great, rum on my shoes. I'm all dressed up. A shame to waste such a good thing. Well, bottoms up. Hey, there's a window. How do we break this window? Maybe use this handle. No. Maybe use this log. Nope, sturdier than it looks. Uh let's see. Uh, 
Now let's check out the strange building. This uh, portrait is very, uh, this hole is very portrait shaped. Okay, well that was, that was something. Uh, so 1812 to 1840. That's, uh, what, 28? Okay. I mean, that was, that was a s simple enough puzzle, honestly. Anyway, that brought us an elevator. But, uh, we're not gonna worry too much about this elevator yet. There's not a whole lot we can do yet. Now let's go back to the manor for now. Because I think we have everything that we need to uh, get the key. This is one of those silly puzzles that uh, I was talking about. So now we know that there is a key on the floor too far to reach, but I can see it. So, um, well, we have an empty battery. We have vinegar, which is... Kind of acidic. It's probably not the right kind of acid for this job. But um, apparently that works. So maybe you see where we're going with this. We're basically making an electromagnet. We're going to wrap this wire around the handle. And if we combine this with the battery, it'll become magnetized so we can get the key from under the door. Jam the handle back on. And now we have access to the manor. There's an ore. A large rod. It's too heavy, won't be able to take it with... I mean, we're carrying a lot of heavy crap already, I don't know. But this rod sure looks like it fits... Uh, over here, possibly. There we go. Barely stays. Mm -hmm. Let's grab this roasting spit. For no particular reason. Just randomly a fire extinguisher here? Well, I guess it's not a terrible thing to have. I'm sure this copper wire will be useful. Not that, we, not that we'd be able to use the copper wire or the electromagnet that we have or anything. That's already all there. It's like this very circular box. It's apparently a resin box, alright. Also, it looks like this fuse is damaged. Too big. All right. Um, move. Trying to make sure that I don't forget anything here. So obviously, a log goes in fireplace. Sure. Um, now we only have this matchbox. Unfortunately, just using the matchbox, not sufficient. Um, I swear there is a way to get these things out of, like, the smaller container. I think the problem with the matchbox, I don't know if there are any actual matches in it, it's just the box. And that's, that's the problem, but it's not actually telling us this. Okay. Um. Okay. So this fuse. We have this foil. What if we just jam this foil directly into the fuse box? With absolutely no sort of protection whatsoever. 
and then put the the fuse back in. That, that's safe, right? That's perfectly, perfectly valid. Nothing bad will happen. I swear. This recess sounds hollow. Good to know. Alright, I think that's all we can do for now. Let's go to the lighthouse. You know that roasting spit that we got? Well, I, I was on to the right idea before by trying to use the handle on this window. That wasn't pointy enough. Alright, so that gives us a hose. We can use this to water my flowers, because of course. A piece of glass fell inside the, light the lighthouse. Science? To hell with science. So what do you suppose we get we're going to do with the hose? I mean, you probably figure that we're going to use the hose uh, over where the well was, right? And you're not entirely wrong, but... That's not all we're going to do with the hose. Let's go back to this, uh, this strange building here. So I will just go ahead and tell you the fuse that we repaired was for this elevator. So we'd be able to go to the bottom floor. We're not doing that yet. You see this railing here that you can just barely see? That you probably wouldn't notice for a long time? I use one end of the hose on that. We're going to use the other end of the hose. Which is apparently long enough. On this handle. Do you see where this is going? And then without getting into the elevator, press the button. And defying physics, it opens up just like that. But now the hose is damaged, so we're going to need to fix this hose if we're going to use it. Let's call up the elevator again. Oof, it's freezing here. It's like a tomb. Let's look at the ground. It's kind of dusty, right? Eh. Oh, balls are placed too high. Huh, alright. What if we use this barrel? Barrel down. And there we go. Now we can reach the bottom. If I climb on this barrel, I can get one. Fantastic, it's cider. Um. Oh, okay. Oh. I was trying to think. Hmm. Actually, we might not be able to do this yet. Okay. Let's take this wooden shoe. Apparently Cinderella had really big feet. That's fine. Does this key go to this keyhole? Yes. Okay, simple enough. That's an algae, which is really attached to this rock. Now this canal is open. Uh, I'll just go ahead and say it. If we had tried to use the hose on the tap outside, it wouldn't have worked. Now it will, but now we have a leaky hose. Now let's check out these pieces of glass, which we're going to very, very carefully take. And maybe we can use this glass shard to get this algae. We barely cut them. We should soften them before. Hmm. 
365 steps. I counted them. One step for each day. If you took a step each day, you'd be up here by a year. Alright. I can get a look around. Rocks, a shipwreck? I need to find a way to that shipwreck. Oh, what if it's a leap year? You're just gonna have to leap around on the stairs, I guess. <sighs> trying to remember where I need to point this thing. I might need to find. Uh, I actually wasn't trying to click on that this time. I think I need to find something else first. There's a drawer. Plop, plop, plop. Fortunately, it's not locked. This journal here. Cursed be the ship that stays too near the devil's seven teeth, for it will become the devil's feast. But is it not the fate of the sailor to sacrifice himself body and soul? The notebook in this drawer mentions the rocks that we can see with the field glass, or even with the naked eye. Very chic, apparently. See if we can find these devil's seven teeth. Actually, I'm wondering if it was just referring to where that ship is wrecked. Anyway, since we learned that lesson earlier in the game, let's check this door again and see this that was clearly not there before. This paint remover. Alright, so this is apparently not opening, but if we use this ore to pry the dresser open, there we, there we go. Opens up just fine. Call that a knife! This is a knife. Okay, nothing else in the dresser. damn fridge fix at some point, I promise you. Okay, so there is something to do with this. And up and see, see a ship. Let's to get a closer look. Click, click the shipwreck again and then we see the combination. So, someone put that in chat, please. Red sword, yellow cannon, yellow cannonball. The colors are important. Yellow cannonball Z. Okay, so now we got this uh, this lighthouse, which is perfectly kept. Nice little curtain here. Be a shame if something bad happened to it. Damages them a little, but I'll do it anyway. Screw it, we're doing it live. It's function with kerosene. Let's 
There is... Oh yes, I need to check the curtains again. Because of course... And there's the bottle of kerosene that we're going to use absolutely not on the bed. Um, I mean, we need it for something else. Alright, so now we need to go back to the crypt. And remember this trunk? Uh, let's see, so what did we have? Red sword. Yeah, so that's, I guess it's a knife. Red, yellow cannon. I guess gun is probably close enough. That's tricky. They don't use exactly the same symbols. The ship's log of Philibert, captain of the brisk hard. A piece of fiberglass between the pages for some reason. Okay, so there's, I think, one more thing here. We will need another bottle of cider. Because we need to use this cork in the right place. There's a bottle way up here that we can't reach. Yona must have been a giant to have been able to pick this up so high. If we pop this cork in just the right way... Never mind that that would probably, like, explode if it's aerosol. Anyway, this is rust remover. Uh, and I think that is everything in the crypt, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go back to the well. We're gonna need to fill this well. Now we still have this leaky hose. But uh, if we put the fiberglass on the leaky hose... Uh, not quite the right idea, but that's in the right direction. We need to make it so that this fiberglass will stick to the leaky hose. What do we do? Put resin on it. If I can aim correctly. Oh wait, hang on. This is the correct thing to do, I'm sure, just that for some reason it's not... Hang on. Okay, so I guess we do need to attach the hose first. Resin on the hose? Perhaps. Doesn't look like the correct method to repair it. Okay, so there we go. We got the fiberglass on there now that the hose is on the ground. Now we put it on. And now the hose has been repaired. Let's fill up this well. Despite the fact that this is not really how wells work. And as luck would have it, remember that quirk that we just popped? Eh, it landed in the well somehow. Okay. So now, now we must be done with the hose, right? There's nothing else to do with this uh, perfectly repaired hose that we just fixed. Let's cut it apart. 
because the part that we that we uh, repaired now becomes a blunt instrument. So now if you're having trouble following, good, because so am I. Let's go back to the lighthouse. This little piece of algae here that wouldn't uh, come apart. Let's try the razor on it just for fun. Rock is too bumpy and this razor wouldn't work well. So I guess we do have to use a glass shard just that we should soften the, the algae before. So how do we do that? Um, use this paint remover to melt the, uh, the algae apparently. Okay, and that opens up this mechanism. Not a button, not a lever, just a hole. Then we can use this roll stick still on there. But it can't move. Probably rusted. Well, at least the solution to this makes sense. Cool, alright. Uh, I am going to drop a save just in case. Because we're about to go for a ride on this boat. Maybe not. Hmm. I'll well, we'll need to do something about the seawater and uh, really the only thing that I can think of is maybe this wooden shoe. <laughs> I'm not gonna drink seawater. I don't know why the wooden shoe was there, but hey, at least it's useful, I guess. You never know what this game's logic. Eh, you're not wrong. This takes way too long. Oh dear. There is indeed a leak in this boat. We're gonna have to do some, something about the leak. Well, I mean, we could use this port, right? Now... Oh, well, what if we use the rag first? Now... I am missing something. Yeah. I'll use the right on the leak specifically. Yeah. Not enough. Then if we use the cork as a bomb. There we go. Apparently that's going to, yeah, more or less waterproof, despite that the rag is going to let the water in. Anyway, let's use the ore the way that it's meant to be used and shovel. Okay, boat. Use the ore on the boat. Won't be easy to go ahead with that, but it's better than nothing. So let's just leave our stuff here. By the way, might I remind you, there's still a smuggler or something around here. Who's to say that this stuff is still going to be here when and if we get back? But hey, if all of this stuff is inside the barrel, maybe it's like... It's just a barrel that is not particularly descript. Oh, I'm doing pretty well and moving along. Getting closer to the shipwreck, I can see it now. It's actually a big ship, I should go around it. Oh no, what's happening? The boat's going toward the rock, I'm gonna crash! Ah! You're, you're, the boat's going toward the rock because you're navigating it there. Your release, please. Woman overboard, help! No use yelling, no one will hear you, sweetheart. Shore seems closer this way. I won't go back the way I came. Too bad it isn't closer. Oh, what a scare. I never thought I'd make it. I'm wet, but safe and sound.
could try to climb, but with bare hands is clearly impossible. So yes, over this cliff is uh, back where we were. Obviously, we are not we are not able to use the map to get around right now. Well, there's just the cabin, I guess. This time, there are no locks to break. Let's check this dresser. It's more of a cabin, I believe. And then here we find chip in a bottle. It's done entirely with matches. It's a real nice chip in a bottle. It'd be a shame if something bad happened to it. Like me. It's a shame to break it, but I really needed the matches. Fortunately, they've never been used. So now we have matches. Let's check the dresser again, just to be sure. And of course, there's another item that was clearly not there before. Nwok Man. Of course, the local fisherman likes fish. Nothing in there anymore. Chandelier primitive, but it works. Let's uh, check out this chair. What's this? The notebook that is used to steady the legs. Belongs to someone named Melchior. Interesting. Now what if we were to use this chair? To climb up to the chandelier. I should climb up that well that's what I'm trying to do. I need to click on the chair again? Okay. Ah, that's where it's mounted. I'll be able to use it safely. I'm not trying to use it, I'm trying to dismount it. And I probably need some tools for that. Let's check this sweater in this basket. She contains a handkerchief. Okay, what else does it contain? What is that? A nail. And some fresh bread. Who put the sweater here exactly? And how long ago? Well, the sweater itself is no good. So now we can use this nail on the handle to undo it. How you're supposed to know this is beyond me. So now if we examine the chandelier, it's supposed to be able to disassemble it. Then take it out again, disassemble it. Why did it work that time? Okay, well, anyway. So we got three items out of that a candle, an anchor, and these floats. Fair enough. I think that's everything. Let's go back outside. And save for absolutely no reason. Let's take a look at the roof. There's a boy, but I can't get it. The fisherman comes here from time to time, must arrive by the sea. Apparently, there's a fisherman that lives here, and we're just stealing his crap. How can we make it fall off? Hmm. That 
That's a good question. Maybe if we throw this bread up here, uh, we'll be able to attract some uh, some birds or something. It won't work that way. Throwing the bread was certainly a great idea. By the way, the game is now uh, soft lock. The bread itself won't do crap. Excuse me, what? Why am I back here? I think the game is a bit broken. Okay, now well, let's do the thing again. Maybe it's the game or maybe it's the stem VM support, I don't know. All I know is I'm not going to use the same save file again because apparently that just breaks things. Let's see if we can skip this. Okay, we can. Can't skip these little cutscenes though. It's also worth mentioning this is the CD ROM version of the game. There was also a floppy version of the game. I don't know how many floppies it was, but obviously it doesn't have the digitized music. I believe it has ad lib music and it doesn't have any of the voice either because obviously. Also a lot of these animations are heavily abridged. You do have to be sure that you get everything here. Also, something that I didn't point out when we took out the Nuak Man here is uh, Durley's does point out that um, it that it smells like fish. Yes, fridge it smells like fish. Can you believe such a thing? Let's go ahead and grab this chandelier again. It's very. Uh, interestingly built chandelier. Okay, that's the thing. If I go from here, it doesn't work. But if I use the right click, it does. That's so weird. Um, Alright, let's use the club on ship. We don't need to do that here, but we you know. Go ahead and save to a different file. And uh, this time let's use the Nuak Man on the bread and throw that on the roof. Sure enough, that was just barely enough so that we can get this boy. Boy oh boy, we needed this rope. Let the saw be attached. I wouldn't put my teeth on it. I mean, I wouldn't recommend that. I guess let's use a razor. Okay, so now we have a rope. So all that remains now is for us to get out of here. Obviously, we can't just use the rope on the cliff because how is it going to attach to anything? So what do we do? Attach the rope to the angle. For, one, uh, for once, another solution that is maybe a little out there, but it does make sense. And now we're back here. Oh, 
Okie dokie. So the first thing, of course, that we are going to want to do is get our stuff back. Let's go back to the basement. We'll get our barrel and what little was in the bed. I think like the fire extinguisher, maybe the kerosene. That's about it. Okay. So now, there's a couple of things that we need to do with this barrel. And you might, you might think you need to use the match to light the candle to light your way somewhere, right? Now, use the candle. I thought you... Hmm, hmm. At least... Uh, so, oh, maybe we need to actually put the barrel somewhere first. Which, okay. Sometimes, but now it's spoiled. It. We gotta use the candle on the barrel for some reason, at the very least. Let's see if we can open this pack. We can. And there's sand. Okay. The sandbox. Is of course. Uh, we should have everything that we need to light this fire, though. We have our wood in there. Uh, let's put some kerosene on the handkerchief. Put that in the fireplace. Use the match on the matchbox to light it. And there we go. Now why do we do that, you might uh, wonder. The heat expands the rod in such a way that should not be physically possible unless it was uh, almost the entire length already. That opens up this flagstone. Let's put the barrel on there for no real reason. Now is when we put the candle in the opening on the barrel. Um, so now we have a closed barrel. Let's do something about that. It's open now. Um, so this lifted up, right? So maybe we have to press it down again. Let's use the shoe on the sand. Use the sand on the barrel. And 20 minutes later, once we've filled this barrel with sand... There we go. We're able to get into this opening. And just make sure... I'm going to save here. Because once we go in here, we can't come back. We descended into a long damn tunnel that went... okay. Now, let me read that game. Anyway, apparently the passage closed behind us, so that's great. We're stuck here now. Hopefully we have everything. Funny that the floor is still solid. This ship must be at least 150 years old. Yeah, considering that there is an active leak here, I'm, su I'm surprised that um, this ship is not uh, a little farther underwater. Excuse me, I'm getting hiccups. Let's check this mass and find that there is randomly just a pair of pliers here that was apparently here since 1840, I guess? So we got these pliers now, which is the pliers that we started Chapter 2 with. Let's take a look at this box. 
How long has it been there? Looking at the way it's closed, it must contain a treasure. Now let's see what we can do about cutting this. It's not gas, that's electricity. Well, oh sure, electricity works here. So now, what uh, what's next? We need we need to find a way so that this wire doesn't uh, get cut, maybe. Or I guess the first thing we need to do is find a way to interact with this wire, despite the fact that we're in a boat made of wood and there's nothing that would conduct electricity. Uh, what about these floats? Let's put them on the floor. Stand on those. Now what happens if we cut this wire? We f***ing die! I think I fainted. This thing is way too dangerous, I could get killed. Well, I guess we need to find a way that the current remains going, so let's use this copper wire. I could get killed. If only I knew how to read. That's dangerous. I must be careful. So now, theoretically, if we clip this wire, the electrical current will keep running, right? And sure enough. Although I don't think uh, I don't think it would bend that way, but you know. So consider the fact that we start the second chapter with the paint remover, the pliers, and the small pipe. That leaves us two items, the extinguisher and the club. So of course, what do we got to do to break open this lock? This time we don't have a battery. Huff the extinguisher. I'll huff it on the lock. And apparently it's like liquid nitrogen or something. We're just gonna keep doing this. Hmm. Okay. Now I'm missing a step is what's happening. Use a small pipe on the puddle. Then we use the water on the lock. It's not acid, but there is a hint. Apparently that is enough to freeze the lock so we can break it open. Clean job without any complications. The treasure is mine. <laughs> if there is a curse, well, too bad. I'll open it anyway. An Egyptian sarcophagus, all in gold. That's a treasure with a strange glow on it. Could it be radioactive? Do not touch that, miss. Who are you? You frightened me. I didn't hear you come in. And you, what are you doing there? You are too curious. But this is my home. I inherited this manor. How did you get in? My name is Jarlath. To be brief, I built these heights, and all that is here belongs to me. Inherited, you say? Oh you dear. You inherited it from me, then? Strange. Your face reminds me of someone I once knew in the past. Oh yes, I remember who you it's not important. This house was built in 1840. But I am sure I have never met you before. I don't care if you understand or not. Your intrusion disturbs me. If I let you go, you could disrupt my plans. You aren't going to kill me, are you? Oh, no, no. 
but I have a better idea. And you can't do anything about it. <laughs> Goodbye, miss. As I ran after him, I was captured by a strange whirlwind that left me unconscious. I know what happened. When Jarlath saw you, he jumped into the past. And since you were following him, you went back in time too. So it really is possible to travel in time? Oh yes. In the time I come from, it's possible to go back in time, but not into the future. A gold mine for dreamers and bandits. A committee was created to regulate travel in time. They enacted laws and established a police force. I was attracted by the adventure, so I joined. And what is your mission? I'm after the infamous Jarlath you met in 1992. He stole a sample of a superconductor that is extremely valuable to the Defense Department. Unfortunately, it is also extremely radioactive. Ah, the sample must be what is hidden in the golden sarcophagus close to Yoruba. That explains the glow when I opened it. But what does Jarlath intend to do with it? Thanks to you, now I know that this ship is going to sink off the coast of Europe. The treasure is going to be safe and close to the manor. But since I inherited the manor, the owner, Jarlet, must be dead. And I am his descendant. He seems very much alive to me. It may mean that in this time period we are in now, you are going to kill him. Your theory is rather complex. I haven't killed him yet, but I have killed him. Careful. Perhaps he will kill you. When he left, he said that he knew you, and then he went back in time? Yes. He said that I looked like someone he knew in the past. What do you think he'll do? Kill one of my ancestors? I think his plan is to eliminate you. We must stop him. He interferes too much with events. That could be disastrous. And now, uh, what about untying me? Well, anyway, I'm alive now, so he hasn't gotten rid of me yet. Don't move. I'll come back with something I can use to cut you free. Oh, this small hook stayed in my hand when the door closed. Maybe I can use it. I don't know where this hook was, other... I guess it was on the door? I don't know. Point is, we can go back to the hold. I see this box. Wait, is this the box? Yeah, we can use this hook on the box. Apparently, that's good enough for this lock. I mean, it is 1840. And now we get a little bit of a style change. Now we won't look as inconspicuous, or as conspicuous. So there is a ribbon as well, because of course we're going to have to check uh, something twice here. So this box has a uh, spring-loaded double bo bottom. Another one. Another one. Another one. Anyway. That's all we can get for now. Anyway, the, um, the whole reason we got this ribbon was so that we can take this wooden pin, attach it to this oar, and tie the whole thing together. And then if we use the corkscrew on this rig... Wait, no. Did I do that wrong? No. Okay, okay, okay. What I need to do is use the pliers on the nail again to make a twisted nail. And then we can use that on the stick to make a boat hook. Would you have been able to figure this out on your own unless you're rubbing everything on everything? I don't think so.
Also, by the way, Zero, it, it ain't the uh, it ain't the temporal security annex, but you know, close enough, really. Now, there is something we gotta do with this butterfly, and I'm trying to remember where it is. I've already interacted with that. The name's Five, Agent Five. Uh, let's see. So I kind of remember what I need to use it on, I just don't remember where it is. Okay, we need to go into this closet. There it is. This buckle here. Let's use the book, the boat up on that. Make some noise from behind. Oh, okay. Now I see. Thing that we need to do here at the end. It's a notch here. What if we use this, cork this corkscrew on the notch? There we go, and tie the halyard to the corkscrew. So now we get to find out what that does. First, we need to figure out where that does something. toward the back of the ship. Bucket. It's full of garbage. It smells like rotten fish. You need to click on it three times in order to get anything from it. Anyway, um... We use the makeshift saw. This was all I could find. Part of a sawfish, but it'll work. There we go. Okay, you're free. Thank you, my dear. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Melchior. My name is Doralis. Melchior, you say? Is this your notebook? I found it in the fisherman's cabin. Yes, that's my mission log. I lost it a while ago. Now, we must teleport to St. Cristobal Island. We'll use my time pass. Wait a minute. We have to take Yoruba with us. Absolutely not. He'll only be a burden. But I promised. If it hadn't been for his help, I wouldn't have been able to escape. And you owe him your freedom too. No, it doesn't make sense. It's too risky. Look, we have no time to lose. But he could be useful. Don't forget that he is Velvet's lover, Jarlet's wife. I am sure he could lead us to him. Okay, okay, you may be right. But how can we free him? The captain has the keys to his cell. Well, let's go and get them. Do you think Philibert is going to welcome you with open arms and let you rummage through his things? I have an idea. Let's go and see Oswald. Hmm. Are you sure that's a good idea? I've heard that sailors have terrible manners when it comes to women. Oh, don't worry. He's no problem. He doesn't like the captain, and he's just waiting for a chance to start a mutiny. <laughs> Oswald.
Oswald, let me introduce you to a charming passenger. I think she can help us with our plans. Where did you find her? What's she looking for? Is she the one who set you free? Well, uh, she's my girlfriend. Uh, she didn't want me to leave her. Anyway, she convinced me to go back to St. Cristobal. You want to go back? Me too. Uh, the captain must be crazy. He wants to sink this ship off the coast of Europe. Right, there's no reason for us to die in a shipwreck. We'll do our share. Doralise is going to help us take command of the ship. We can sure try, my dear. I'll tell the captain that we've found you and he'll lock you up in his cabin. When you're in there, try to find his magic gun and bring it to me. The gun will only work with Philibert's magnetic rings. That's why everybody fears him. I know how it works and the sailors will follow me. He had to be clever in order to get here. Anyway, we have no other choice. You must succeed. Let's go. Psst, Doralise. Meet us at Yoruba's cell with the gun. Try to find the key to his cell. Well, Oswald, what are you plotting now? Still conspiring, are you? Captain, I've brought you something that will interest you. Oh, uh, yes. What a good find, Oswald. I'm lucky that we're not in the same league. Otherwise, you'd have kept her for yourself, right? Looks like she escaped from her father who wanted to force her into marriage. I imagine, Captain, that you'll teach her what life is all about. You are absolutely right, Oswald. She's something out of the ordinary. If I had known, I would have taken a bath before leaving. Well, my beauty, I'm going to lock you up in my quarters. I'll take care of you later. I'll leave you with Gallipo, my parrot. And don't worry, I'm not going far. I don't try anything. Gallipo will warn me. Well, now that I'm alone, let's look around. Rather luxurious stuff. You know, I'm trying to determine whether I would rather deal with this guy or Zach from the longest journey. <laughs> also, you could clearly see the green screen in those shots. It was great. And they, I'm sure they had fun making this game, it's just some of the decisions are very strange. Alright, it sure is a balcony. There's a stern. Hopefully it's not Howard Stern. Let's grab this flag. I'm sure no, no one will miss it. We gotta go into this room. Let's check under this room. Nothing. Check under this room. Nothing. One of these corners is going to have something. You just know it. There we go. Is this, uh. We have to get a close up. Hollow notch. Unfortunately, we don't have our uh, corkscrew anymore. And I guess that we need to do something about this notch in order to open this. And it ain't using the brass key. Let's check the right side. Let's get ye flask and ye bowl and a trap door here, but unfortunately it's partly covered. 
And apparently the rug is bolted to the floor? Excuse me, what? A dish. Some banana slices. I'll just carry those. Doesn't look that tasty. Mm. Uh, let's see. That's about all for those rooms. Check this desk. Maybe this key will work here. Sure enough. We get a blotter. The traces of ink. What wild ideas did the captain leave on this blotter? What else is in the drawer? The fine fragrance of mahogany. Oh, there it is. Now it's empty. I mean, if there's one thing that you need to, to learn about this, is keep checking something until it specifically says it's empty. There's a silver key here. By the way, just to remind you, Where is... where is the bugger? There he is. Yeah, that bird's flying around, and if it does something that uh, it doesn't like, like opening the stressor... Shut up, you bunch of feathers. Why shouldn't I look in there? Does this box hold a treasure? Not good at making tables turn. Oh, how the turntables. Let's see. So now let's see if we can use this dagger to cut to cut a rug. I mean, we do have something for the bird, but that itself won't be enough. Anyway, we can open this now, which gives us access to the rest of the ship. Let's go back down to the hole. Remember that, uh, that box that had a fake bottom in it? Let's stab it. Oh, oh. Beauty powder. For good measure, let's check it multiple times. A delicately scented handkerchief. There might not be anything here anymore, but, uh... Okay, it's empty now. I'm twisting my neck, but I still can't see it. Okay, so... Muriel Tami, and for that matter, Cocktail Vision itself, is a French company. So some of the French to English translation ain't gotta be great. This line is pretty good, though. I'm twisting my neck and I can't see a thing. And dang way, uh, let's see. Come to think of it, can I get the corkscrew back? I sure can. We're probably going to need it. Okay, 
Let's see. And this music. <laughs> it's like GoldenEye 64 up in here. Um, we need to go to the cellar. See here, double seven. Now, there is a trap door, but um, how should I climb this? Hmm, I wonder. Let's take a look at this post. There's an opening. Then use the, cor the corkscrew on the opening. So we can find this master key. Here's a master key, and it should be good for the whole floor. Now one would hope that that would be enough to um, to unlock Yoruba, but uh, no. The cache is empty. But uh, the fact remains, how do we get back up there? It's too smooth, this post here. It's too smooth. It's impossible for me to get a good grip. Well, how about some, 18, uh, some 1840s brand beauty powder? That should probably have some grit on it, right? Sure enough. I don't know, considering the fact that she's coming up with these completely bananas solutions to everything. I don't think I would call Doralise's brain very smooth. In fact, I might even go so far as to call it a little jagged. Uh, let's see. Can we use this master key on this door? Mm. Razor sharp wit. There you go. Okay, so I'm not really sure why it uh, told us to come back up here because we don't need to be back up there yet. A door well secured. There's no lock and no handle. Mm. Uh, this mysterious door. Not even open. Unbelievable. Well, should be able to unlock it, right? Shelf that contains E flask. Something to make copper shine. Alright. Nothing else on the shelf, apparently. Anything else in this room at all? No? Okay. So now we need to check well, this door. Closed. Not very nice. Man, what a wild idea to have a key that you can use in multiple rooms. This drawer has Tiny little ring with a seal. What else does this drawer have? Nothing, okay. Only one thing for once. Boom. Yeah, there's a cage here. You can probably use that for the bird. It's an helmet. Turns out it's not actually velvet, it's just velour. What is velour invented in there? Are you spottering him? You trusted me with a mission. And that just goes back to the lower decks. We've already been there. Door 
look at Captain's cabin. We're just gonna stare at it and then leave. Because apparently the only way to the, the Captain's cabin is up this uh, hatch. The door is just there for show, apparently. Gonna trick the bird into the cage with the banana, then cover it with the flag, then use the corkscrew somewhere in, in there for good measure. I mean, I did mention it'd be nice if we had the corkscrew. If we used it on this. No? Yeah. Huh. I am legitimately surprised. How about this seal? Aha! The secret passage. This room is well protected for sure. What secrets could it possibly contain? A 60s style bar? 1940s armchair? A low table? And yeah, this. Where in time is Carmen San Diego? Well, it doesn't seem to be bothered by the fact that, that there are pieces from 1940 and 1840. Melchior will be happy. Strange plate, but it is a 78. L literally just a vinyl record. What about the 60s style bar? Sounds rather modern for this period. Is it possible that Jarlath travels through the centuries? Look at this phonograph! Um, yeah, this hasn't been invented yet. I don't understand why it's here. It must be one of Jarlath's prizes. Anyway, let's just leave through this door that was completely sealed for a reason. Surely that won't cause any problems. Back up with you. Every time I travel through time, it makes me like. It doesn't really follow the flow of the song that well, that now does it? Now, this is a music table. That's your clue. Put the phonograph on the music table. Now, obviously, you want to put the record on the phone. A little change of music going on here. Not hearing any music, I don't know about you. Ah, thief! Thief! Help, Captain! Ah, thief! And unfortunately, we're still worried about the bird. Now there's this uh, under Gallipo here. Let's put this bowl under Gallipo. Let's put the banana slices on the floor, apparently. And the slices are still there. Hmm. I haven't saved in a while. Let's just do that for a good measure. Yes, I'm saving. I'm saving. Don't worry about it. So you might be wondering, well, this ain't working so well. What if we use... No, that's not it. Hang on. Okay, use the salt flask. Hang on. Once that's done, turn around to face the dresser. There's a record on it. The bowl on the ground under Gallipo. Use. 
Okay. Got it. We gotta use the paint remover without having the banana slices there. Then use a Saul's flask. And literally can make mustard gas under the bird. Muriatic acid plus ammonia gives out toxic fumes. And down goes the bird. A gallop was slightly sick. Won't last long, but now he'll try to find something to eat. So now let's go over here. We have a cage. Let's put the cage on this table. Let's put the banana slices in the cage. Sure enough, bird decides while it's sick as crap, it's going to get in the cage and eat some bananas. Then we're going to cover up the cage with the flag. So now, hopefully, oh, we can use this one. Okay. So now Gallopo has no idea what's going on. And by the way, I it was necessary for us to use the record player, because otherwise Gallopo would still hear what we're doing. There's supposed to be some music playing, obviously. For some reason, it's not, but... Do what we can with what we got. Anyway, that's the forbidden fruit. Big ol' key. Big ol' iron key. Must have been copyright music. Uh, let's see. Now there's the sink. Cover with some grayish green substance. We got some polish here. We need a clean rag while we have this towel. No? We have this handkerchief? Okay. And we use that on the sink. And just polish a little spot of it. Just this little spot, sure. For some reason. Um, I forget if we just use the blotter on the sink now. Okay. 1A28. 1Alpha28. Thank you, Zero. Now, let's see. I couldn't mind. Okay. Now let's check this painting. A really nice painting. It's a painting of a complete blur that somehow miraculously turns into a ship when you get close enough. Sure enough, there's a vault here that's cl clearly way more advanced than anything else on this boat. One alpha. Two eight. I get a small box. Now, what might we be able to find in this small box? You may wonder. Well, I will tell you all about it right after the break. They all can take a moment. Get something to drink, go to the bathroom if you need to, stretch your arms, stretch your legs, stretch your teeth, 
And in about 10 to 15 minutes, we shall return with the second half of Lost in Time. So, I'll see you in a bit. <laughs>